Welcome back. Uh, so for today, we go back to Algerian francophone female writer Asia Jopar uh, with uh, her novel entitled La Femme Sans Sépulture. Uh, it was published in 2002 by Albin Michel uh, Edition. So this is uh, a novel that is based on a real story, which is the story of Algerian freedom fighter uh, Zuleha Uday. Uh, she was not only a freedom fighter, she is also a martyr, so she died during the Algerian Liberation War. And she is one of the best known heroines uh, in her region. Uh, the story, um, as Asya Jubbar herself uh, tells in the prelude to the novel, this is a story that is based on the real life of Zuli Haudai, with obviously some fictional elements that come to uh, to complete the narrative. The novel is uh, divided into 12 main parts, uh, in addition to the prelude and to an epilogue at the end of the novel. Uh, and uh, we have different um, narrative voices. So we have the main narrator, I would like to say, along with different other voices. But more interestingly, we have also the voice of Zuliha herself in um, four parts entitled Monologues by Zuliha. So uh, these parts are told uh, through the voice of Zuliha, who, uh, who comes as a kind of ghost, uh, um, to tell us about parts of her life that no one knows uh, but her. So uh, the setting of the story is, uh, the main setting of the story is Césarie, Cherchel. And we have a, a movie maker who intends to make a movie about this heroine of the war. So she goes back there and she makes different encounters with different women who were in one way or another uh, in relation with uh, Zuliha. So we have uh, very old women who, who were friends and, or who were family members uh, of Zuliha. And we have at the same time the daughters of Zuliha, so each of these characters is going to bring part of uh, the heroine's life. So uh, the story of Zuliha then is really um, constructed like a mosaic, uh, as Asya Jubbar herself uh, states at the, at the beginning, with each character bringing part, uh, part of not only her life actually, but um, uh, so her life, obviously, but also what was happening during this uh, colonial era. So we have then the life of Zuliha as a freedom fighter, but we have also the life uh, of Zuliha as a woman, as a mother, and so on. And in addition to her, we have also all the other women who are helping her in one way or another in her uh, fight. So we have a real female web uh, that was surrounding her. So the novel then takes us um, through this, uh, again, very important episode in Algerian history, which is the Algerian Liberation War, through the life of Zuliha and uh, through the life of other women as well. And we can learn a lot about Zuliha's public life, so her commitments, uh, her political consciousness, the way she was tortured, uh, the rape experience, which is one of the greatest taboos, uh, I guess, in this uh, Algerian Liberation War. And I think that this is one of the texts, one of the few texts that uh, tackle this uh, this issue of rape, but also through the personal life of uh, Zuliha, uh, through her love, desires, uh, her uh, experience of mothering, her life as a wife, uh, and so on. So we have really this kind of balance between the public and the private, between uh, history with the large, uh, with um, history, uh, the history of the country, uh, and the stories of the women who were uh, living then. Uh, I would like to share with you um, a passage, a short passage from the novel. Here we have, this is taken from uh, the part entitled Premier Monologue de, Zule de Zuliha. So here we have Zuliha who is voicing her own experience. So uh, I quote, En un éclair, je me suis détaché. Un des gardes a posé son arme lourde contre mon épaule. Je m'adresse au poignet encore levé de l'inconnu, de toutes les inconnues. Je scrute les visages des, des vieux figés. Tous, je les découvre, baignés de larmes muettes. Pourquoi pleurez-vous Je crie. Je déclame avec fureur, car j'imagine que pour une fois, 
pour une seule fois, toi au cœur de la ville immobilisée, tu m'entendras, toute la cité enchaînée m'entendra. Pourquoi pleurez-vous Sondais-je. Mon corps soudain léger se retourne, fait face à la garde, au camion, à la soldatesque au fond, aux hélicoptères qui se posent. Regardez tout ceci, mon geste est à nouveau pour toi, spectatrice de cette scène immobilisée, pour dans vingt jours ou dans vingt ans, quelle importance, mon geste dénonce ce acharnement de leur armée. Regardez, ô oh mes frères, tout ceci seulement pour une femme. Thank you uh, for watching the video and see you hopefully next one.